Kat Huntoon here from Technique Junkies and today we're going to be making a card using uh, the Technique Junkies Pine Branch stamp and you can see it's got some pine cones and some pine bows here and um, some white space and a nice frame so that's the pine uh, branch set S774 and I'm going to be coloring it using pan pastels and these are pan pastels um, they come I have some of mine flat into a container here. You can also get them like this in a stack. Um, I like the containers because they stack nicely and you can really see you can really see the colors much easier, but I have them both ways because I don't have enough of the uh, plastic stacks right now. So the, to start this project, it's a very simple project. We're going to start using a Versamark pad and we're just gonna put Versamark all over our stamp just ink that up really well and then I'm going to stamp this on a white sheet of paper now I, I need to mention to you that you're really going to see the Versamark because I have two Versamark pads I have one I call my dirty pad and one I call my clean pad uh, because I do so many techniques sometimes my my pad gets dirty so I have one pad that I allow to stay dirty and one I keep clean the reason I'm going to use the dirty one and I'm using a Impression Obsession Mini Mount, which is available at TechniqueJunkies.com. Um, the reason I'm using the dirty one is because I want to be able to show you the image. You can see it better on the camera, I think, if I use the dirty one. It's not going to matter because I'm going to cover it all up. So I'm just going to use my stamp as my guide. And when you buy pan pastels, they come with all of these different little sponges. Um, and I'm going to use a variety of sponges today. I'm going to be using this applicator in the smaller part. And I'm going to be using this um, one. As you can see, I really love this size. It fits nicely in my hand for the rest of the project. So let's get started. First thing I want to do is I want to color the brown. I want to color the brown on the pine cones here and the branch here. So I'm going to use this color, which is kind of almost like a time color see the color here it's almost a time color it's a greenish brown that's the color I'm going to start with so I'm going to load up my simply taking and loading up my sponge just by dabbing it on there loading up my sponge and then I'm going to just run it over everywhere the pine cone is and you see you can really see the image pop right out I'm gonna put it on the branch a little bit A little bit on the branch and the pine cone. Now I know some of this goes outside the line and I'm going to show you what we do to fix that. So I'm just going to color those areas. I'm going to do a rough coloring of them and I'm going to use the package as a guide. So is there any other place on this package, any other place on this image that should have some brown? There's some, the, there's some right here. So I want to make sure that I get that spot. And then I go up high enough and get that spot covered with brown. Okay, so now my brown is on there. And that's just my first layer. The second thing I want to do is work on the pine branches behind. So I'm going to take the same applicator and just flip it over. I'm going to run it in the green here. And I'm going to start working on those pine branches. Now here I want to use a little bit lighter touch because I don't want to color... I don't want to color that background quite so much with green. I want it to have some variation. I want to put some silver behind there to make it to set it off a little bit. So see if I make a mistake like that. I'll show you what we're going to do. I went off the Versamarked area there. So I'm just going to put this green all over very simply. And you notice I have some brown on the pine cones. It's no big deal. I'm just going right over the top of it. I'm using a light touch on this. Reloading my my sponge as I need to. Just go right over everywhere there's a pine branch. All right, so now I have all of the uh, green on there that I think I want to put, and I can noodle this forever. Oh, I keep going over that spot. Let me show you what you do if you get too much of one color on there. You just take a simple tool called my er an eraser, and I just use this stick eraser from Staples. And 
just go through and lightly erase that. Look at how easily it comes off the unversamarked areas. Very easy. I'm just going to erase that a little bit because I want to put a different color there. So I'm going to go through this. I'm going to erase this and speed it up for you. So I think I got most of the green off of there that I want to. Now let's add some highlights to this. I want to put some red or some of this rust color really inside the pine cone in selected areas just to give it a little bit more dimension. So I'm going to use this same tool here because I think it's my smallest tool. I'm just going to put some of the rust on the bottom of the tool. And I'm going to just put a little bit here and there. I don't want it to be totally rust. So I want to be careful how much I put in there. And this time I'm going to put it down and then I'm just going to use my fingers to kind of blend that in a little bit. Again, I don't want it to look like it's rust. I just want to give it a little bit more dimension than it's got right now. So I'm going to put some here and there. So I think I have enough um, red on there or that color. And now I want to add just a little bit of yellow. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take this mustard color and I am just going to go here and there on the, on the pine cone. And this time I'm going to be on the white parts. And I'm just going to put a bunch on there and then I'm going to blend it around with my finger. It's just again, it's not an exact science here. Just to get it a little bit more dimensional than it was looking before. And now you can notice that <clears throat> because I have covered up the Versamark so much, it has more of a chalky feel to it rather than sticking to the actual Versamark. So I'm getting quite a bit of yellow on there. All right, so I think that that is really what I want to do with that. And I can't help dabbing a little bit more color on there. Okay, I want to, that's all I want to do with the pine cones. Now let's work on the pine branches. With the pine branches, I want to use some, not the pine branches, but behind the pine branches. See how it kind of looks messy? I don't know if you can see that from that far away, but it kind of looks messy. But there's no verse mark there. So you, we can still use our pan pastels. And I'm just going to use, uh, I think, this edge of this. And I'm going to grab some um, silver. I'm going to use some silvery gray here just to add a little bit of color back there. So I'm putting quite a bit on there and I'm going to just go in between the cracks here. And then I'm gonna come back over with my, um, either the eraser or some more of the pine color just to touch it up. So I'm gonna stop talking now so I can fill in these blanks and you don't have to watch me. I'm also gonna do the frame, so. I might change this frame color, but we're going to start with it in silver. So you can see I've, I've filled in and I've retouched up most of the, the green here that I want to touch up. I really don't want any white space. And then my last and final step is to burnish this. So I'm just going to burnish this with a very soft cloth. I'm just going to go over the top of it. If there's any other parts that need to be adjusted at this point, I'm going to keep changing the area I'm working on so I don't move some of the green onto the brown. I'm just going to go over it again and if it lightens up too much like this has got very light you see how light that is it's kind of nice and subtle I might go over that one more time with a little bit of the time color just to give it a little bit more dimension and if there's any areas that need to be adjusted a little bit I'm going to go over that with a an eraser 
I'll finish this off and I'll show you the final project in a minute, but this is pretty much what it looks like when it's initially done. If you burnish it enough, you see the shine on it, that means it's been burnished enough so that the, uh, the actual color is not going to come off this any longer. So it's uh, been burnished out. I'll finish it off and I'll be back in a minute to show you. One more time. After I burnished this, I decided that I didn't like how flat it looks. So I took a little bit of a lighter green and I just went back over the parts that I had burnished already. Just to add a little bit more color to the pine branches because I think they looked a little lifeless in that darker green. And then I'm just going to go over this one more time, just lightly. And I'm actually going to seal this. Now you can seal this in a couple of ways. You can burnish this until it's flat and that'll be um, usually is sealed enough. Yeah, that's much better with that color on there. Or I could put a spray over the top, which is what I'm going to use with mine. I'm going to put a finishing spray on this and it'll hold all the colors on there nicely. And I'll be back with the finished piece. So here's the finished piece using the pine branch stamp. And I did another piece using the skull frame. And then finally I did another piece using the pine branch with a lot of green on it. I hope you've enjoyed this simple tutorial for using pan pastels in your coloring and I hope you'll give it a try soon. Give us a thumbs up if you like us and join our channel for future tutorials.